And you still have an extra movement. What kind of terrain is this? Dry grass. Cool. So we can see that it's just water to the south. So I think we're going to head north. Coffee. The tea. Ooh, event. A game of prophecy. With the Empire thriving, a new game hailing from a foreign land beguiles the population. Everywhere you go, the distinctive game board and pieces catching your eye. Insisting on a public demonstration, you play the game under the instruction of your palace court, but the event has a sting in the tail. The game is reckoned to be a form of divination as well as entertainment. Gasps can be heard as the game's prophecy become clear. You are fated to lose everything. What will you do? So, we can keep silent. Oh, we can silence the rumours. If this prophecy spread, the results could be devastating. Every witness should be paid off. Uh, we can overlook it. Let the people gossip. The prophecy will soon be proven to be false. And that's going to make us defiant, but it will lose our stability for ten turns. Or we can heed the advice. We must listen to this devastation. Oh, sorry. We must listen to this divination and prepare for the worst, which makes us superstitious, which will lose us to science for ten turns. Irrationality runs riot as citizens succumb to a time of hearsay, exaggeration and superstition. Scientific advances are slowed or the mood and moon mournful defiance hangs over the city, fueling discontent. Um, Picture the royal game of Varus, an actual game from Mesopotamia. I assumed that. Who did I see playing it? Tom Scott. Tom Scott played against like a ancient game of a uh, expert at the British Museum. What I want to see, though, is this applied to Neytafel, the Viking chess game. That would be a cool piece of uh, hearkening right there. But I like the fact that it references this. This is cool. Um, so we can overlook it, which will be the stability. We are so small, I'm not thinking stability would do very much. But then also, we're ancient era, so superstition is probably super powerful. So this will give us an opportunity to take a look at stability. Public order is currently at 54%. It will evolve every turn by minus 5 until it reaches 48%. So it's going to go down until it hits that. I don't know what effect these levels have, though. Just that it's going down. So, maybe bad. Maybe don't care. We shall see. All right, so Babylon has also finished building its tanner. We're currently getting writing, so that's not going to be useful. We could get another scout. Plus 5 stability per adjacent extension. I'm guessing this is an extension as opposed to an exploitation, which is what this is. Or are they both extensions? Oh, stability under control. Ah, here we go. In a state of under control, the people are quiet. The state will remain so as long as your settlement public order stays between 30 and 90. Which it will. So we're fine. As long as it doesn't go below 30. So I don't think that we necessarily need, for example, the public fountain. So we could... Build some archers. Build two more scouts. We can go exploring the east then. Uh, we could also use them to hunt deer and stuff. Kind of wish we had spearmen. Getting an archer and a spearman, for example, would be quite nice. You know what, let's get two scouts. We'll just create a second scouting army. Exploitation refers to the tiles around your extension, shown in the fields and the little furnaces. Anything with a dense cluster of buildings and extension. So these are the exploitations, these are the extensions. Okay. And the extension expands where you can exploit. How much is it going to cost me to set up this city? 
250 ducatses. Okay, a bit more expensive than I have right now. Merge your armies. This army contains a single unit only, There is still, uh, but is still using one of your empire's generals. We have 18 left. To be able to keep creating units without suffering a money upkeep cost due to the inefficient generals, you can merge your armies. Move an army to another army's tile if the total units of both armies is less than equal to the unit slot limit. Both armies will be merged and become one. Okay, so merging I get. How do you split? Because that was something that I was looking at previously with this unit. Like, I'd like to just... Because I'm just exploring anyway, I'm not fighting. I'd quite like these to be two individual scouts. But I never saw how to actually split them. There's only transfer. Or create a new army. That's how you do it. Oops. Left click, left click. Aha! That makes sense. That teaches me to actually read things. And we'll send you up this way. Ooh, science. Yeah, animal remains science. Cool. Those pop-ups really need to hang around longer. I'll give you an option to close them. Okay, we have an idle army, which is the scout. Did you just get insta-built? I didn't think I was quite there yet. Okay. And we're building another... Okay, they are just taking one turn instead of the two, which it's telling me. We must have still had some production saved up. And we're producing 31. So this scout will be finished next turn. I don't think I need three. So what shall I do instead? Lumberyard? Plus one production on exploitation. So will the ex numbers of these just go up by one? Because that seems like it would be incredibly powerful if it's just plus one production. <laughs> to be fair, you haven't discovered writing yet, so it's okay to not know how to read. <laughs> well, the tiles where you exploit industry. Interesting. Three, two, two. See exactly how that works. I'm curious. Onwards. What's that? Mercury. All cities. Plus five stability per Mercury. Plus two science per Mercury. All right. So we've got our scoots who need to scoot a boot. You can go there. Um, you can go here. Got another thing to look at there, and another thing to look at over there. And then we also have you coming in this way. That is a big river. This would be a very good place for the irrigation cities. Nipper is still building that thing? Two more turns. And you still need more money. Onwards! So, you... Go ahead and explorify... Can we go over water? Is this water? This is not water. Oh, it's a deer. 1v1 versus a deer. We are stronger. Do it. Confirm. I'll just go ahead and automate this thing as it's a 1v1. Whoa, where's the deer? Defeat! Wait, we lose? We lost! How... Duh. Okay. I don't think we even got hit! 100 hit points! Oh dear. So whoever is in command of this army should be shot. 
because they're clearly not very good at their job. Volunteers, a second unit of scoots. Who immediately can move as well, which is quite nice. Oh wait, no, these aren't scouts, these are warriors. Interesting, so we got better fighty people. And we got you to explorify. You can come over here. More money. 200. Oh, we are getting so close. Two more turns and we can build a city again. Yeah, we'll go down here. Because there's another thing to explore there. I think your scouts thought it was a bad idea to sit in the river and fell back, but the deer didn't attack you, so because the deer survived, it's considered a loss. Ah. Writing! Though it starts as crude marks on simple materials, the ability to store and transmit knowledge will change the world. So, I want to go down to Babylon, because in three turns you're going to finish that, and then after that, you are going to get me a market quarter. Right there. Oh, hang on. Maybe not. Cancel that. Because that's apparently going to cancel the production. Because I don't have anything here which produces money. So actually building that here is a really bad idea. This should be a production thing of some kind. To be revisited. Oh no, House of Scribes is just a local upgrade, it's not an empire upgrade. But it would mean that any researchers would produ produce more science, but we have no researchers. And by the way, we can see exactly where our people are assigned. Uh, here, so currently Babylon is a population of three. We have one on food, one on industry, one on money. And we can move them around if we wanted, say, more science or uh, more money. Or if we wanted extra, extra food for even faster growth, we could do that. And... I actually kind of like this idea, because we have a maximum population of... Not three. Ten. And I quite like the idea of just growing really fast. <laughs> Just came into the stream, the first thing I hear is the commander needs to be shot. Well, he lost a battle against a deer by not even fighting it. Uh, do scouts get any bonuses for being the ones exploring, or are they just fast? He ignores moving penalties from forests. Yeah, you just hit harder. Okay. It's not like Civ where they get bonuses to exploration. 15 science! Promote that man at once. Let's go. Science? Yeah. Two hundred and thirty. Next turn, we make the money that we need. And you can go up to here. That's going to be more science. And a sanctuary where we are standing. Perfect. Ransack that spot. So next turn we get 22 ducats as well. And then this guy... Hey, stop scrolling. <laughs> I didn't do that. Stop. Stop. Um, we're going to go... This way. Did I teach those poor individuals how to swim or not? I don't actually know. Oh, the army can move again. Uh, well, there's a sanctuary over there with some deer. So we could show those 
silly scouts how to actually fight. I think that would be worthwhile. Let's do that. One idle city, Nipper, finally finished building the astronomer's house. So now we can get a food producer here or a nothing here. That's not a luxury resource, it's a strategic resource, which is the do, 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 stoneworks. It gets no bonuses from adjacencies. So yeah, that needs to be a farm. There. Can't judge Jim. I would lose a battle against a deer as well if I had only a club or something. Really? Against a deer? Uh, population here has doubled. That's good. And we have another technology to research. So, we could go for city defense and then bronze working, which would allow us access to warriors and then spearmen. Does this mean that I can't actually use that copper? Ah. City defense it is. Because I already see it on the map. Just like I already see horses on the map. Not sure. With the advent of permanent settlements, thought naturally turns to security and defense. The earliest innovations are simple but effective. Oh, did we get that technology immediately? Yeah, because we got so much technology from uh, Discovery's last turn. So we just insta-got it. Bronze working, then. Let's do that. Perfect. Onwards. Uh-oh. Don't stand on my new settlement. Speaking of new settlements, I need to create the new settlement. Outpost becomes a city. Make it happen. All right, scouts. We're going to try and go that way again. Sins of the Father. Oh, here it is. The birth of writing has permitted word of your great deeds to be recorded and disseme disseme disseminated amongst your people, but it has also allowed a person's debts to be tallied. In the past, a person's debt died with them, now that they are inherited by their offspring. However, in the new city of Nippur, the political leadership wishes to strike those debts from the record of anyone who makes the city their home. What do you say? So we can assent. The Empire will take on the debt of any citizen who comes and makes Nippur their home. We'll lose a hundred ducatses, but we will gain two population. We can deny this. Those owed will be happy to hear their interest-paying monies are still due. Nippur becomes prosperous and will earn five extra ducatses per turn. The markets ring out with the sounds of commerce as trade flourishes. Or we can choose to restrict who gets this bonus. In the interest of fairness, only those with small debts will be given the right to settle. I cannot afford minus 100 because we just bought a new city. So we're going to do restricted access because I also don't want to be losing stability for being in debt. Because we'll be in debt for like three turns. So we'll go, well, three, four, two extra population. That's a lot of population. You know what, sod it. We're, we're going to eat the, uh, the loss. It's fine. It's just good business. Or isn't good business in this instance. All right, warriors. Warriors, come out and play. The Great Blue Hole. All manner of sea creatures stalk the hole's uncharted depths from sharks to gobbies to angelfish. I'm guessing that's another natural wonder. It is. All manner of sea creatures. Yeah, we read that already. Plus five influence per natural wonder, plus ten stability per natural wonder on the settlement, plus ten money for natural wonder on the settlement. So this would be another good location to build a settlement, though it is quite well it's not massively far away although right now i think i'd rather have the horses to well marble is good it's very good for money although it's going to be a while before we can get the next outpost so i don't think this will ne necessarily matter
Guessing that you're coprolithic at the moment, so you know what, what copper is, but not how to use it properly to make bronze. Yeah, possibly. Okay, you guys can move an extra province. I think we'll move you back this way and we'll probably merge these two armies once again. Because I feel like we are ending the exploration phase and entering the we're going to hunt everything phase. Except over here. Over here we are still very much exploring. Carcasses, 15 ducats. Carcasses, 15 ducats. Well, this is paying off our debt rather more quickly than I expected, which is excellent. And then we've got the warriors over here. Acknowledged. You can mark that. <laughs> Acknowledged. Affirmative. Yeah, you can get down there. It just takes two of movement to move to that spot, I guess. Okay, scrolling back over here. You're still building, you're still building, you're still building. Marvellous. Bronze working. Forged in fiery crucibles. Bronze is stronger and more durable than copper and transforms tools, weapons, and armour. Okay, then. So next up, we can go to the ancient era, or the classical era, rather. And start working towards either philosophy or the standing army, which would allow us to get swordsmen. And iron. So we could basically just bypass the uh, copper age, uh, bronze age. It would take 12 turns, the game ends in 10, so we don't really have time for that unless we get more um, science going. Or we could get some of the cheaper technologies like domestication. That's probably better. So domestication will give us animal barns, which is more food from farmer's quarters. And for farmer quarter adjacencies. And it's a central building. It's an infrastructure building. Okay. Cool. Oh, you're still moving. Um, I want you to move north. Ah, it's the terrifying deer! Run away! No, you couldn't reach. You have made it to the sanctuary. Loot it. You are going to fight the deer and show these scouts how it's done. Confirm. Why did you not move there? Well, two between 85 and 95 damage. Sure. Whack. 93 damage done. Almost one-shotted him. That won't work. not possible. He's already moved though. Scouts are in the battle too. Oh, they are. But this is still them moving. Ah, here we go. Defend. The warriors will show you how it's done. There we go. See? I see how that works. I didn't expect them to be able to join from all the way over here. Because they were one, two, three tiles away. So apparently reinforcements can arrive from quite some distance. That's going to lead to some interesting sized battles. Alright. We have you. You just gained some science. You can continue here. to explore into the cold snows of this snowy area. In turn. Domesticization. The taming and the breeding of wild animals such as pigs, buffalo, brings new means of eating and working. So next technology. Let's take a look what's available. So that leads to 
horsemanship, which would allow us to get scout cavalry. Fishing, again, I just don't see being very useful, so I think we're going to go for horsemanship. Make it happen. You are going to ransack that. And you Over this way. can move to there. And you Follow me. are going to grab that and run away from that deer again. Then we'll have you merging this into that army and then the warriors will merge in as well. Next turn. You still have another move. You can move a surprising Come distance. Uh, just wait. Skip. All right, production. You're still building. Four more turns. One more turn. And turn. Battlefield area depends on how many units are participating with the reinforcements mechanic. They can get pretty big. Yeah, seems that way. They've done a lot of cool things since I came to it. I'm going to give it another try soon, I think. Try of this, Katie? Oh, Old World. Yes, I have looked at Old World. Not very recently, but like a month ago? It wasn't that long ago. We also refined reinforcements. You may have noticed the scouts joined from where they stood on the map, not pre-placed flag. Yes, I did see that. And that's a lot better than just having units just randomly appearing. Although that does kind of happen if you have a stack which joins a battle. Okay. Um, Babylon. Let's build a thing here. So what do we want to do? Ah, here's the castle. Because I did see that the castle synergizes with the watchtower. So if you have the watchtower and a castle, the castle gets extra detection bonus and extra combat. For units adjacent to that district. The castle is plus 10 fortification, plus 1 combat strength for units adjacent. Land units spawn fortified. So this works like the army camps in Civ 6. Ah, and the lumber camp did indeed add plus 1 production to each of these locations. So our city's industry just went up massively, so getting that lumber camp as soon as possible is probably a good strategy. And the animal barns is probably a good one as well, because it will give you extra food in the farmer's quarters. And then if you have adjacencies, like putting farmer's quarters in both of these is probably a really good move. Then both of these would have adjacency with each other. And this would have an adjacency with all of the farmers here. And we would get massive population growth. Which would then mean we have more people to spread around the different tasks. Wait, why am I getting production from this? Oh, the little production thing, I think, is showing what I would lose. There is possible production here, but it's not being exploited because the adjacent thing is a farm. It's not a workshop. Or whatever it is that does production. I haven't actually seen anything that does production yet. Oh, yes, I have. Maker's Quarter. Hold on. Cancel that. Because we could totally build a Maker's Quarter here. Or here. This would probably actually be better. Six from that tile? Oof. Yeah, let's build an industry right there. Right, of course, because it's a uh, mountain. And... We could... Isn't there a quarry or something we could build? Oh wait, forge. This is new. Plus one industry and maker's quarters. Plus one industry and maker's quarters. Adjacencies. Requires copper. Stoneworks. There it is. 